Hello, everyone, and welcome to another uh, episode of Wired for Hybrid. Michael and I uh, are having uh, quite a lot of fun at looking at the, all of the new stuff that's coming up with Azure Networking. And uh, this month, we're going to cover a bunch of stuff like uh, uh, pay-as-you-go changes and uh, new capabilities in WAF and a lot more. So uh, stay with us, and we'll get right into it. Hey, Michael, how you doing? Awesome, Pierre. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm doing great. The holidays are finished, though, and uh, I had to uh, shovel myself out of a full inbox, but uh, now we're uh, hitting the ground running and uh, getting to uh, create some content for our audience again. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm stoked for... Uh, for half two or h2 or semester two for those of you that don't don't know you're like hey mike it isn't it the first quarter well not at microsoft it is That's q3 at microsoft q3. Our fiscal year goes through the end of june so really excited about uh what's coming up this uh over the next uh three to six months and we've got some as as you said pierre we've got some great stuff coming up so uh one of those things that's coming up or actually is here came generally available last november is for when you're using azure front door azure front door classic and azure cdn is newly created instances are going to block domain fronting behavior do you know what domain fronting behavior is pierre no, I'm not quite familiar with that term. So I want you to uh, walk me through it very quickly. Absolutely. I, you know, I had to, to dig into it a bit to find out what it all involved. But basically, it's a technique where you use different domain names in the server name indication field with your TLS header. And then okay. the host field in the HTTP host header. So basically what it allows you to is obfuscate the domain you're actually coming from and look like you're coming going in as a domain that's accepted by a certain network so now with all of these when you create any of those this is going to be turned on by default and if you have like say existing instances you're gonna you can put an azure support and that'll take care of it and so i think this will from a security side, this is really going to prevent a lot of those, you know, bad actors that are saying they're coming from one place, but actually aren't. One thing that this does bring up, and we are fully aware of this, we've got a link to a document of how we approach domain fronting, is that while most domain fronting is done by bad actors, domain fronting is used by a lot of people that use like Telegram and WhatsApp that are in certain countries that lock down and censor them. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, it's one of those things. It's like, okay, how do we manage that? And as a company, many of the other cloud companies are doing this as well as that, you know, just for the protection, because most of the bad acting is coming through there. We are blocking that. That doesn't mean that, you know, we're going out and actively preventing people from, you know, using Telegram or any of that sort of stuff. It's simply to to do that protection of our workloads. So, you know, that definitely important there. I definitely read that statement again because uh, okay. I think we've got a good stand on that. And, and for anybody who's uh, listening, uh, if you want more details, make sure to go to itopstock.com. Uh, there's a blog article there with all of the links and all of the detail, uh, a lot more detail than what we can cover uh, in our uh, 10, 15 minutes here. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, speaking of um, covering things here, um, WAF or the uh, Web Application Firewall uh that is used both with the application gateway and with the with front door Azure front door um, has had a bunch 
of enhancements and, and new capabilities uh, released over the last month. Uh, so much so that we are planning our first deep dive into web application firewall, uh, probably going to publish a beginning of uh, March. So make sure to uh, subscribe and uh, ring the bell at the bottom of this here uh, on YouTube. Uh, that way you'll get notified when we publish uh, our deep dive into web application firewall. But for now, uh, we've got a lot more uh, new functionality in terms of uh, there's a new qu detection queries for uh, SQL uh, injections and cross-site scripting, which makes it a lot, it simplifies the process uh, for you to get automated detection and responses when um, SQL injection and cross-site uh, scripting is detected. Um, Azure policies for WAF uh, logging. If you're in an environment where you've got a lot of workloads and you've got uh, Windows application firewall on a lot of different application gateway and, and front door instances, with Azure policy now, you can set a policy that dictates what gets logged. And that applies to all of your instances of WAF across your all organization. So you don't have to go and configure uh, number one to, to log all of the data that you want and number two and log all the data that you want and number three and so on and so forth. All you have to do is set the policy, apply the policy and all of your instances of WAF will actually inherit that policy and makes it a lot uh, easier in terms of um, getting the logs and metrics that your organization needs. Uh, next one, uh, bot manager rule set exceptions. So now the bot manager rule set 1.0 uh, that is built into WAF to protect your web application from uh, malicious bots that we already know uh, with the IP reputation rule sets uh, has now got exclusion rules because sometimes when you end up with uh, exclusion rules, or you end up with uh, the rule would exclude certain par parameters or certain situation that you may want to allow in your own environment. So now we're allowing for ex execution or not execution, uh, exclusion uh, for certain the parameters. On top of the uh, bot manager rule set exclusions, and we now have an increased exclusion limit for the CRS 3.2 or the core, the core rule set uh, that supports all of the uh, rules that are uh, in WAF or the win, uh, web application firewall. And that limit is now up to 200. So it's a five time increases as to what we could exclude before from the rule set. So that's, uh, both on the uh, regional application gateway with WAF and the global front door with WAF. And the last one uh, for WAF this month is the uppercase transform on custom rules. When you have a form in your application and you have people that are entering data, uh, sometimes in order to assess the data that's in that form you want to normalize it so now there's a uh, there's a way to normalize uh, anything that's like uppercase uh, to bring it back down to all lowercase and so on uh, in order to apply those rules and really handle case sensitivity in your application and i think that's about it for WAF this month <laughs> that's a ton of stuff so there you know, there's some really cool stuff in WAF and, you know, WAF continues on this. Um, I, was I was talking with, with some colleagues and they're like, hey, are you going to be talking about network security and stuff on your show? And I'm like, uh, definitely, because almost everything we're talking about is related to network security. And a lot of the things, you know, a couple of things that, you know, I was really excited out that jumped out to me with WAF was, you know, from the, you know, with the new bot, you know, the new bot manager rule set, it allow it has some default actions of being able to 
determine whether they're a good actor, whether they're a bad actor, whether they're unknown, and you can customize those. And then the other thing, as I was digging more into web application firewall and the updates we have is seeing how much analytics is built into WAF. Uh, you know, the by default, having the Azure policies turned on because we all know in security is that when you find out you've had a breach, you're not just going to the logs last night. You're going back weeks, yep. maybe months to see when the initial was, to see all of those sorts of things. So all of this integration with whether you're using Azure Monitor or whatever it is, the analytics is you know super fantastic. The other thing that I wanted to just call out that I thought was super cool is with the change for the, the SQL injection and the cross-site scripting templates that we have with both WAF on App Gateway and um, Azure Front Door, they integrate with Sentinel. So oh, that's yeah. how you get that automated response detection and response. So, you know, yeah. I think we're going to be talking a lot more as the weeks and months come about how do these integrate with those tools that are integrated in Azure from a security standpoint, like Sentinel and, you know, Azure Monitor and all of that tool. So just lots and lots of cool stuff. And like Pierre said, make sure to check the check the show notes. We've got plenty of docs out at Learn that you can go through. You can do hands-on. You can you can do your own due diligence to see whether or not uh, these are great fit, fits for your environment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, uh, we have one more point uh, this, uh, this month as to something that's new. And uh, that one's yours again. Absolutely. And this is probably the best one all. Hey, now when you create a pay-as-you-go account, you have two, 12 months, not two months, 12 what? months to kick the tires on over 55 different services in Azure. So this is kind of like a continuation of like the free account. And so it's going to offer a number of different things. So along with getting the things that you get for free, we'll do the air quotes here, free um, across compute storage, network, and databases, there's going to be other areas where you're going to get free access to resources over 12 months. Big thing to always keep in mind with this, whenever I talk to people and they're a free account, sometimes I feel like people are trying to take a free account and run their production environments on it. That's not the point of a trial. And I'm not just saying for Microsoft, that's for any trial you really have. Yes. Is that, you know, like if I do a trial Camtasia, there's a watermark on it. If yes. I do a trial for a lot of software, it limits the functionality. So going in, this is a great opportunity, especially in those hybrid environments, for you to take a look at your environment and be able to kick the tires and do some testing to see how workloads might work for you. So this gives you the ability to be able to do that testing as you would be in a test environment. Yep. Maybe you can figure out how to run something full-blown production for free for 12 months, but, but chances it's not are... All, it's not all the services, so it's not... If you're at, if you're running your whole workloads, it's not all going to be free. Yep. Um, in I the remember article on IT Ops Talk and below in the show notes, uh, there is a link to the list of services that will be free for 12 months. Yep. Okay, uh, Mike... I know we've uh, we've decided to keep this uh, short. Uh, we are also thinking about uh, making this into a just a, a podcast on um, on like a Spotify and Apple podcast and some other repositories. So let us know in the comments before below if this is something that uh, would be useful. And uh, again, we have a lot more. Uh, come down the pipe. Like I said, we've got the uh, WAF uh, deep dive. I think we've, we've been planning other deep dives, right? Correct? Yep. 
Yeah, we've got a bunch of things that we're thinking about talking about. Uh, you know, coming up, you know, I can't wait for next next month because one of my services, Azure Virtual Network Manager, we're going GA at the end of the month. So we'll have a lot of fantastic stuff to talk about oh, yeah. for oh, yeah. Azure Virtual Network Manager. And I talked to one of the one of the PMs on the team there, and we're gonna bring them onto the show and we're gonna deep dive into Azure Virtual Network in the coming months. We've yep. also thought about doing DDoS, maybe some stuff on deep dive in Azure DNS, front door, taking a look at zero trust networking. Uh, me and somebody from Fast Track did a great article on that. And, you know, really just kind of focusing on, on a lot of like security type topics for, for networking. So, if you have some ideas of things like, hey, I'd love to hear a deep dive on this, let us know in the comments, reach out to us, and we'll we'll try to put that together. Yes. All right. So thank you so much, Michael, uh, for everybody at home while watching this. Thank you for taking the time to uh, spend with us. And as, as Michael mentioned, if you've got suggestions, put them below and we'll make sure to cover those. And uh, with that being said, we'll see you next month. Awesome. Till next time, friend. Cheers.